Good evening and welcome to One Life Left on Resonance 104.4 FM. I'm Steve Curran. Hello, I am Simon Byron. And I'm Anne Scantlebury. And together we are One Life Left. We're a video game radio show. We talk about video games. How are you guys? Good. I, well, I'm only speaking for myself. <laughs> I'm good. And you're good. So that's great. <laughs> and, you're, and you're good. We're all good. Yes, I guess so. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, Sorry. all very well. Uh, the sun's out. Um, Guns out. It's been a good week, isn't it? We did, uh, did anniversary Marioki last yeah. week. We did. That was a very special evening, wasn't it? It was great. I stayed longer than normal, Anne. Really? Yeah. Well, that's because you had uh, ulterior, not ulterior motives. You had uh, additional investment you were working. in the evening. That's right. Uh, the evening was sponsored by our friends <laughs> and my employer, <laughs> Curve Digital. Uh, we launched Poor Cunipine there, uh, which went very well. Seems good. It's out on well. Thursday, Anne. Is it? It's out on Thursday. How exciting. On all great formats, as long as those formats are Steam. <laughs> it's the greatest of Actually, all the Actually, it's um, PC and Linux as well. Oh, well okay. How do you think we're doing on Game Under's ethics scale at the moment? Well, um, we are being quite open and honest and upfront about this stuff, aren't Have we? Have they given you any free sandwiches yet? Not yet, no. Not we gave away any. free copies of the game to people that yeah. attended. We're giving away uh, letters to... <laughs> so we're giving away copies giving of the... We're giving away Indian, letters. <laughs> giving away copies of the Indie Mixtape to people that yeah. write letters and stuff. It's working out well for, for me and our <laughs> listeners. <laughs> we could just make it... If, if, if it can only benefit you two as well, then that <laughs> would be day. handy, wouldn't it? One day. What is your, how can your employers get involved, Anne? Uh, well, actually, do you know what? My employer is making a game. What? I what? know. Uh, I don't know. Very, well, I, I say I don't know very much about it. I recorded the voiceover for it the other day. But uh, my employer is a charity for blind people, and we're making a ge- an informative educational game. So, so are you going to review the game on the show? I sure will. Okay, good. Well, we'll we'll look at the score you give it with interest. Yes. Can you um, give us an, uh, an example of how you, of what how you did the voiceover? I didn't know I recorded it. That's my job is pressing record. And oh, I see. That sounds like a good job. Yeah. <laughs> you have to press play and record at the same time, obviously. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. And what about your employer, Steve? How could we... Uh... I have my own employer and I have yet to benefit from <laughs> <laughs> the radio show. Soon, maybe. I don't know. OK, well, here's somebody who has benefited once already. They're back for the second round of benefits. <laughs> <laughs> it's our friends with benefits. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's Al from Laughing Jackal. Hello, Al. Hello. How are you? Uh, well, I was okay until that. <laughs> really? I'm worried to what to extent these benefits. Well, we can talk about that. <laughs> uh, uh, of course, you uh, you were on last time uh, earlier on in the year, just before you released Flame Over on Vita. Yes, that's right. And you're back to tell us about how that's going. Yeah, it's going good. And what's um, next? I'm really here to talk about the Steam version. Right. Which is, uh, out on the 28th of May. No, no spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. Come Wait to you in a bit. After <laughs> okay. But we got this news. It's 7.04 on Monday the 18th of May. I'm Anne Scantlebury and this is the news. Sony and Game have been told off by the Advertising Standards Authority for causing unnecessary disappointment. The slap on the wrist was due to the PlayStation 4 20th Anniversary Edition competition, which allowed the first 100 people each day to answer a tweeted question using a big montage of game characters, the ability to buy the Anniversary Edition PS4. But people started sharing the link to buy, which prompted complaints. The ASA said, We told Sony Computer Entertainment UK Limited and Game Retail Limited to ensure future promotions were administered fairly and avoid causing unnecessary disappointments to the participants did they did they give a suggestion of how sony should do this i mean is this sony's fault or is this the people who shared the link i i, I went looking for that link did you i really wanted an anniversary playstation yeah and so i um and it, it all got a bit convoluted uh, the asa is completely right about that 
uh, just I just went on Reddit and uh, right. people were passing it around there. And what do I, you mean convoluted? Well, because you had to f- there were there was a big image of mm-hmm. anniversary characters, and then there were clues about which one of those you had to click in order to get through <laughs> to the URL. And right. yeah, there were loads of characters. Okay. Um, so they did their best to make it into a right, complicated then, game for people. Yeah, to... but then it got too popular, and so the there was a there was an issue with actually. Um, you had to go via this web page, mm-hmm. which uh, every day had a different. So this a web page had, say, uh, loads, lo- loads it had loads of characters on it, um, and at two o'clock, for example, e.g., uh, yeah, I mean, uh, or any other time, uh, other times <laughs> are available. Uh, it would go live and say, okay, well, the, the the clue is here, but then the website went down mm-hmm. because we were all so excited, mm-hmm. and then so you go to Reddit, which stayed up, and then. Um, <laughs> People would say, like, just, just, just go straight to this link. This is an interesting study, I think, in uh, your psychology and your buying habits. <laughs> like, normally, you're an early adopter, Hi. as uh, listeners to the radio show will know, and mostly, uh, I, I believe, you buy these things and then they, you know, you get excited about them for a while and yep. then they gather dust. In this instance, mm-hmm. you were not able to buy this Wasn't PlayStation, no. were you? I know, I was buying something I already own. It's just in gray. Right. <laughs> right. so, gray version of so it. So previously, you may have a little bit of buyer's remorse a few months later. Now, a few months later, how do you feel about not being able to get hold of it? I feel pleased that they've been done. <laughs> <laughs> serves everybody right. Ubisoft has stopped development on games for the Xbox 360 and PS3, except for Just Dance. Confirmed in a call with investors, the developer and publisher said it will concentrate on current generation consoles and PC, but its stance on Wii U wasn't discussed. Recently announced, Assassin's Creed Syndicate will be the first of the series not to be released on the 360 or PS3. It's just like Keen sang, everybody's changing and I don't feel the same. Syndicate the London one? Yep. Good. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I've got uh, apples and pears. Um, so, so, oh, um, whistle, v- v- flute. Uh, me old china. Is that rhyming slang? Yeah, it's for Plate. minor. Oh, is it? <laughs> oh, it comes in handy. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, me old china. Don't be so <laughs> right, okay. Why are you chatting up minors? Well, because, I, I, you know, I want to go into a pit one day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very interesting, Cole. Right, okay. It's manic. Me old China, right? Very good. Thanks. See, that is a video game reference and therefore a valid uh, expression of humour on this radio show. 7 out of 10. I'll be honest with you. Um, I did not listen to the start of that news story. Right. So I'm going to ask this question without any, no- so, yeah. without any knowledge. Um, how do we feel about this then? Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's a shame for people who uh, haven't yet moved on to the next generation. Right, good. Uh, so, do you want me to recap? No, no, no. I think I've got the gist of it now. Yeah. Um, they're not coming out on 360 because I caught the end of it. I just wasn't certain. Well, it's all games apart from Just Dance. Just Dance, apparently. Uh, they know that everyone that's got a 360 or PS3, that is their prime Love audience. Because yeah. mm. maybe they just want to dance, Just Dance, uh, and they haven't. <laughs> they're like, well, yeah, but I can just dance on uh, this console. I don't need to get a new console right. to just dance on there. So, yeah, they're continuing that. Al, how do you feel about this? Well, Just Dance is the only reason I've kept my 360, to be honest. <laughs> I can't wait. Bring it on. No, um, I think it's a bit premature, perhaps, but I'm not really that bothered. Right, okay. Go for it. Good. So <laughs> you're not going to be uh, Im- impacted. Well, I'm massively no. impacted because I don't have a PS4 or Xbox One. No, nor do I, actually. So I'm, I'm gutted if all of them are going to start doing this. Where am I going to be left, Simon? Well, I suppose uh, that's for Ubisoft to sort out, isn't, isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, uh, I mean, Ubi, if you want me to... Uh... You, you've always games. been uh, you've always been very into the Assassin's Creed series, the lore, haven't yeah. you? What's yeah. your favourite bit about it? Uh, the, where they crouch. Yep, <laughs> it is <laughs> strong it's crouching. Yeah. It's good yeah. strong crouching. And also crouching and climbing on top of things. Mm. Good climbing. So if uh, if Ubi want more sort of analysis like that, they know what they've got to do. Send me a console. <laughs> Microsoft is getting tough with people who leaked the Gears of War Xbox One remaster. The game was being tested by members of a video game test company called VMC, all under a non-disclosure agreement, but it looks like some of those members ignored the NDA. Apparently, one member shared a screenshot over Snapchat with another member who then leaked it online, causing them both to get the sack. Microsoft has also permanently disabled their Xbox Live accounts and effectively bricked their Xbox Ones. Rules we've learned over the year, trust no one with your Snapchat shots. 
But I thought Snapchat deleted the, the snaps you well, chatted. Well, Steve, yep. it does after mm-hmm. a certain amount of time. But of course, you can take a screen grab what? of your what? phone at any point. But, it does tell the person uh, who sent the Snapchat if you've screen grabbed it. So they're, they're, they're then just like, man, you've got that photo on your phone forever. All those things we've been Snapchatting at Keith Stewart. I know, I know. That could be Regrets. on The Guardian. Now, presumably, this um, these concerts. So, what was the name of this group, and, and, first, and why aren't we in it? First, so, it's called the, the, v- the it's BMC. It's a video game test company. BMC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is? So, it's, it's not very it's not... many computers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, the, they're, they're the right people to yeah, be testing. Sounds right. like. So, why aren't we in this? So, if they're all getting to play the Gears of Oh, it's because we don't like Gears yeah, of War. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly, Do you guys yeah. play other games? Uh, yeah, loads. All of all of them. All of them. Okay. Very many. Can you get us in this VMC? Group. Uh, by the end of the show, I will have Thanks looked very into much. it. Thanks very much. Just, just send him a tweet. Yeah. Um, now, presumably, if you're part of this VMC, Microsoft must give you the console, mustn't they? One way of you getting your Xbox One. Because th- 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 the end point is that, that surely, if they just brick a console that you've paid money for, because. But this is all part of the uh, NDA. Like, and uh, they're sorry. talking acronyms at me. The non-disclosure agreement, <laughs> okay. Simon. No, but, but but sure. But then they. But they. But that. They can't then brick your... But it's only been... So so in this case, it's only been temporarily bricked. And people didn't think that Microsoft had the ability to remotely brick a console and also the term brick they've they've just removed all of the capabilities for getting online and basically doing anything what so they've not bricked it mean, then? well they've, well, made, exactly. it, they've made it effectively <laughs> what does, useless what does, what does bricking mean just like you chuck a brick at it right <laughs> <laughs> that's basically it so no but if they've just taken away the online component then you can still play your single player games can't you yeah well what so are they saying that single player games are effectively useless <laughs> effectively useless <laughs> okay, right, wow Okay, well, we, we I mean, I, I haven't even got Snapchat on my phone, no. so there's no danger of me... Maybe that's going to be a new component of, component of NDAs. You have to sign up and say, I will delete Snapchat. Right, I won't take a screenshot. Or yeah. I'll send Microsoft all of my Snapchat so that they can vet them. Right. Maybe that's a way of doing okay. it. Um, and are they going to get this functionality back, our friends in the VMC? Uh, well, their Xbox Live accounts have been disabled permanently. Wow. Uh, well, they can become Byronic Man UK too. That's what I did when. <laughs> um, and the uh, what has happened to their console that is temporary, whilst Microsoft considers their situation. Hmm. <laughs> There was drama for Dutch indie developer Two Awesome Studio as 7,000 uh, 7, euro pledge from a user called Jonathan pushed its Kickstarter game Dimension Drive right up to its 30,000 euro target. The developer started celebrating the success, the successful funding of its project up until Kickstarter stomped in, turned out the lights and pulled the music up by saying that Jonathan and his donation were fraudulent. As it stands, Dimension Drive has failed to reach its target, although many are asking Kickstarter to grant them an extension. Ouch. I th- yeah, I mean, obviously disgraceful, absolutely mm. heartbreaking stuff. Uh, you know, we've all run successful Kickstarters here, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's all of us, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> okay. On this side of the table, we are, hey. we are self-funding. Hey. <laughs> Steve and I have got this story. Yep. Um, Bit of pride over here. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine how... Um, how heartbreaking this was. So was it discovered to be fraudulent after the Kickstarter closed? Yeah. or did Because the first uh, version of the story I, I read, he withdrew the thing just before the clock, but I didn't think you could do that. No. So the Kickstarter rules have changed over time. Where you Okay. So if a game is funded, um, you can't withdraw your pledge if you would take it underneath it. So right. this one's an altogether uh, devious... Um, way of trolling uh, in which uh, he pledged 7,000 euros in a four yeah, presumably from I think it was from card, yeah card I details, think it was from or, stolen uh, credit cards and it wasn't just this Kickstarter but this is I think that this is the one that closed okay, first right. uh, and so obviously the account has now been suspended which is all Kickstarter can actually do Um but yeah, you would assume that if they do get an extension, or even if they run their campaign again, that the publicity from this and the sympathy that it's generated will help them get closer to their target. Well, a lot time. of people, like Rami, for instance, mm-hmm. has said that he will he will give them a thousand euro oh, towards it. Rami, uh, and, and lots of people have said, oh yeah, if you just give them an extension, we'll definitely pledge. So. I was chatting with them today, actually, uh, and yeah, they are going to regroup. 
Mm. I was doing some backup because I knew that you'd cover this, Anne. And I knew you wouldn't have all the. It's exclusive. Okay, good. Yeah. Can you put it in quotation marks and shout <laughs> exclusive over it? <laughs> and finally, a new Ratchet and Clank film has been announced and it will contain, quite literally, some people you have heard of. Due to be released in early 2016, along with Insomniac Games' reimagining of the first game for the PS4, the animated moving picture will star such heavyweights as Sylvester, Sly, Stallone, John, slicker than the average Goodman, Rosario, knock on the door, Dawson, and Paul, OMG, yes him, Giamatti. You will also be able to hear their voices alongside RNC regulars Arnold, I actually won't be back, Taylor, and David, if Goliath calls, hang up on the phone, K. <laughs> so fucked. That worked. So what do we think about that then? <laughs> Big names, huh? <laughs> I mean, they were really big names. They took you way over the jingle. Way over the jingle. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's great, isn't it? 2016. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> why, why did you select this as, a, as your fifth news story? I don't know. Sometimes I panic and I think, what's going to be funny? And there's nothing funny. <laughs> I mean, it was funny. We're all laughing. It's, yeah. It was the right story um, in that. Just had a lot of just a lot of uh, story. Final story is usually my celebrity story. Okay, so it's a video game CGI film, right? Uh, Yeah, uh, video game. Has there ever been a successful one? Yeah, the last one was mega. Which one? Ratchet and Clank. Was it the last one? The last one. Yeah. Okay. One of my friends had a kid, and he was like. That's my how successful kid, it was. My kid loved it. <laughs> the story's <laughs> Apparently it's brilliant if you're a kid. I quite um, like Street Fighter the movie. Yeah, definitely. It went through awful. Definitely not CGI and definitely not good. Yeah. I'm oh, sure it's so not CGI. Doesn't uh, doesn't count. Sorry. I just wonder if there's any, you know, because these things are essentially just video games where you don't interact. They're long cutscenes, right? And that's not why any of us got into video games. No. Now maybe uh, Ratchet and Clank has great uh, has great characters, strong characters that you just want to watch for a couple of hours. I think you do. Well, and it's kids got might, some... but, you know, it's Ratchet. Got, it's got Ratchet in it, isn't it? <laughs> it's got Ratchet. And, and his the other mates. Ones. <laughs> his mates. I forget what he's called. <laughs> Chris. Right. <laughs> Ratchet. Yeah. They're both they're both they're both strong. Um, I don't know. There's there's uh, the only video game successful video game uh, Pixarish movie I can think of is the. Uh, uh, which I can't remember what it's called. Wreck It Ralph. Wreck It Ralph. Right. Yeah, that one. <gasps> no, that's the film they went to see. What? Right. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so that, not. Yeah, what? no kids liked. Okay. That. So no, and no children have been born. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. So was there another? Re- no. Ratching? No. <laughs> no. Do you know what? I got confused with Wreck It Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a, been a really Speaking successful news story. Can you just wrap it up. Thanks, Anne. One life left of video game news with Anne Scantleberry. You're listening to One Life Left on Resonance 104.4 FM. This is Richard H. Bright. It's called S101. It's from chipmusic.org, like most of our music is. Uh, And you've been doing some research while we've been off air. Yeah. Uh, Any updates on that last news story? 
There has not been another Ratchet and Clank film. Okay, just to uh, confirm. Just to confirm. Just to confirm. Okay. Just to confirm, uh, no children have been harmed in the making of this story. It's great. Fan- fantastic. Great. Uh, but we all loved Wreck-It Ralph. That's yeah, right, that's, what we, that's what came out of this. Everyone's Strong. into Wreck-It Ralph. Yeah, exactly. Okay, excellent. Um, anything else to update on? Anything happened over the last couple oh, of minutes? Oh, sorry, I'm going to try and get us onto VMC. Oh, yeah, you should, you should do that. Yeah. I guess not. Uh, later in the show, we will have some video game uh, features. Game Under is not back this week. He's still taking some time off. Uh, just to sort out some ethics. Okay. Uh, but we will have the return of a One Life Left classic. Who? Cool. Not telling you. You can probably guess. Uh, and also a bit of local news will be coming up after the interview section of the show. Good stuff. I think that's about to happen. Right now. Now. Al! Hello. Welcome back. So how, how have you been? Not too bad, thank you. Very busy. Very busy. Yeah. Uh, tell us about Flame Over then. So um, just to bring our listeners up to speed, it's a pyrogue like Yes. Uh, was referred to. Um, it's game good, isn't it? Originally came out on the Vita? It was Vita back in March. Um, yeah, it's basically kind of a top-down shooter, but instead of bullets, you're squirting water and spraying foam and throwing water bombs around. Procedurally of- generated, you're constantly being chased by death. Yeah, well, not Stuff. constantly. If you run out of time, you get chased by okay. death. Uh, and it's just constantly throwing... It's quite a simple idea, but it's just throwing stuff at you all the time. Like, you've got to watch out how much water you've got left. You've got to worry about rescuing people and cats, obviously. Um, power-ups. Right. Buying stuff, upgrading. But yeah, essentially roguelike, where every time you die, start over completely different each it's time. It's good, I enjoyed it. I found it, I found it very difficult to start off with. Yeah, it's... It's harsh. It's sort of like Dark Souls and Spelunky and Helldivers mixed together. Okay. Have you, uh, since since you came on here, you've been reviewed, haven't you, by the yes. press? Has, have they given you any sort of snappy quotes to hang on to, like, it's Spelunky, but on fire? Uh, I think uh, Kotaku said it, yeah, it was, it's what Spelunky would be like if you were a fireman. There we go. Um, I prefer some, mine, honestly. Oh, it's somebody nice. said it was like Dark Souls and Spelunky and Helldivers mixed together, but I can't remember who that was. Surely there's loads of them. good fire puns. Your, your Pyroglike yeah. is the best yeah, thing I've yeah, heard so yeah, far. Yeah, that was one of our Twitter followers. Yeah, really? Yeah. You got credit. Sign him up. Um, so that came out. Vita, how, how did it do? Yeah, pretty good. Um, critically, it was um, very successful. Commercially, pretty successful, but... Um, we're really sort of pinning everything on the Steam version PS4. Okay. Yeah. We think there's good potential there. What um, what feedback did you get from the Vita audience? Um, well, what we did was once all the reviews had come in and everything, we sat down all in a big group, looked at all the coverage, went through all the good stuff and the bad stuff. Um, not that there was very much bad stuff, thankfully. And um, just tried to act on everything that we, we saw. So we put a tutorial mode in. Okay. We've put in um, a thing where you can reclaim your, not souls, right. but um, <laughs> coins and power-ups and stuff from a previous run where you were killed by death, so you can sort of grind through. Okay. There's a few other extra mm-hmm. secrets as well to help you speed run through and things like that. Cool. Yeah. And um, what, uh, how, is it any different now you're going to a, to a bigger screen or screen? So it's coming out on Steam this month and yeah. PS4 when? Uh, as soon as possible. Okay. You know, we're sort of working on submitting it at the moment. Right. So. Yeah, it's pretty close. Okay, so how's, yeah. it, how's it changed, sort of moving up in resolution? Um, well, there's a lot more. It was kind of built, really, with HD in mind from the from the start. So um, it's properly HD. It's not like we've sort of cobbled it together yep. to stop the resolution or anything. Uh-huh. But, um, so it looks pretty damn good, I have to say. Do you find there's, uh, you know, you mentioned that you've added in things to help speedruns and stuff. Yeah. There's obviously a different play style on PC than there is to Vita, isn't there? So is yeah. That, have you done anything else to the game to sort of... Uh, um, we've given you um, pretty standard things, so you can map the controls wherever you like. The mm-hmm. mouse, I have to say the mouse and keyboard controls, which we were initially quite sort of scared of, are brilliant. Okay. Yeah, which <laughs> was good for me because it's a bit of a revelation. So right. um, that's worked out really well. Um, we've made it a bit more continuous with the um, reclaiming of money and also we've helped people speed running and doing high scores on the leaderboards because you can uh, chip away time any time remaining at the end of a game session 
will be lopped off your overall time. Okay. So it makes the leaderboard a bit more granular. Yeah, yeah. Do you think this you is know? a game that at all plays into the, you know, uh, people's love for streaming these days? <laughs> Twitch. <laughs> yes, we've already been on Twitch a couple mm-hmm. of times. Um with uh, good success. People I think it's just one of those games where it's quite simple and everything, but um you can play anything from 5 minutes up to about 45 maybe. Right, right, right. Maybe an hour if you're really sort of being a bit really pushing it to yeah, sort yeah. of the edge of survivability. But yeah, it's designed to be played okay. over and over and reasonably quickly. Yeah. Interesting. Um I know I know one of the things that some rogue likes uh, are doing for Twitch uh is is allowing the people watching to contribute to to uh, what's going on? I don't know what they do to your game. Maybe set more things on fire. Yeah, like that. it kind of works, I guess, with tile-based stuff a bit easier because you yeah, can sort yeah, of yeah. plan ahead. Um, mm. But yeah, as is real time, so yeah, it's making, more making, frenzied. Making procedural games, uh, we've heard before, is a bit of a nightmare, isn't it? Uh, it can QA, be that sort of thing. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. So how do you how do you uh, how do you approach bug testing an infinite number of levels? Well. It's not so bad for us because the rooms themselves are sort of fixed and mm-hmm. they're kind of stitched together differently each time. But there's a to sort of combat what might have been a bit stale there. Mm-hmm. We just made tons of rooms, so there's about sixteen hundred oh, wow. rooms. Um, I think you're going to see maybe a tenth of that in any one game. So, and that's in a specific order. So there's tons of variation. Um, that helps a bit, mm-hmm. but um, I can't even remember what the question was. Sorry. <laughs> so like, how do you how do you how do you test? <laughs> yes. how, do you test? how do we test? Yeah. yeah. So there's there's those um, so there's a reasonably sort of finite number of um, combinations within some sort of plausible limit that we can sort of try and do, um, and it's just the rule set's quite simple, really. So. Um, mm-hmm. You just play it a lot, right. and you make notes, a lot of notes, to make sure you've covered everything you need to cover. Uh-huh. How's the um, how's the reaction been now, then, given that you were out on Vita a couple of months ago? Is it, has it been difficult? Really good. Um, no. we, we did um, res on the same day that we came out on Vita, uh-huh. which was awesome, actually, because uh, a lot of people had already picked it up, and we were in our section, we were definitely one of the most popular games, and we were in the... Uh, in the, the main indie yeah, area, were you? You were next yeah. to Iron Bread, were you? We 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 attempted on to, the to other turn side into toast. It. Were you? We should have, shouldn't we? Yes. Yeah, uh, we should really set fire to something. Exactly. Some sort of PR stunt. Exactly. But I was next to Carmageddon. Were you? Yeah. Oh, were you? Car, car engines. Ne- they're really loud. Yeah. Like, so it wasn't good for a sort of <laughs> ambient music puzzle game. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you um, you were at EGX. How have you managed to, to keep the press interested? And <sighs> well, this is the great this is the great difficulty with people. Of our scale, um, we just hassle people basically. Right, okay. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm, I'm open to open to anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wants to review it. Yeah, far away. Right. <laughs> That's why you're our friend with benefits. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so any and all benefits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah uh, but I I guess it's the opportunity, like, given that Vita is um, it's uh, it's not a niche format obviously but it's a very specific format you're, you're able to go much yeah. wider now PC yeah, yeah. open stuff up have you uh, have you had any successes how, how rock paper shotgun been about it nobody what there has got in touch with us yet I'm afraid to say yeah. so they should, they should well, they are yeah. very sort busy it out. writing superhero comics <laughs> exactly and, yeah so, so. maybe we could take this opportunity to um, stop, start some sort of movement right to bring down rock paper shotgun no, yes. no. let's do it interesting uh, to encourage them Unless they're fire. listening, <laughs> unless they're listening, in which case, don't want to bring you down. No. Want to be best friends? Well, if you leave a steam code with us, we'll pass it on to them. Yay. Should we? Thanks. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure that we can actually do anything. Should, but, we, uh, should we put it in a <laughs> no, bag? Fair enough. Put it in a bag, set it on fire, and leave it on their doorstep. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That would we kind could, of work. Are you having problems with anyone else while we're while we're here? <laughs> yeah, just get them all. Yeah. Okay. Have you not done many? Have you them. done many uh, community events and stuff then? Have you taken how um, about? Because that's a good way of. Yeah, we've done a couple of shows, um, but yeah, not as much as we'd like to do. We've just been we're quite a small group, so we've just been stuck in our puddle, okay, making the game basically, right? Yeah. Well, best of luck with the second launch, Steam Next, and then PS4. Yeah. And are you going to put any of the revisions back into the beta version? We've got a patch kind of set up, uh, which is ready to rock, more or less at the same sort of time that we release. Hopefully, so uh, okay. we've got oh. to push that through. And yeah. what, what what will that do? 
Most of the gameplay sort of tweaks and stuff are in there, but not some of the additional features, just because we're already um, pushing it on Vita. Okay. It is right. Is it? it? It really does give it a good old hammer. Right, right. Lots of particles. Okay. Doesn't like that many particles. That's fire for you. That's exactly. it. Yeah. It's crazy. Good. Well, best of luck uh, yeah, on Steam. We're looking forward to seeing it there and uh, PS4. You're going to stick around for the rest of the show? Yep. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sega Badawi, and welcome to One Life Left, local news. The new director of the International Pokemon Squad has confirmed that their controversial Pokemon, Kevin Peekerson, will not be considered for any future matches. As you all know, Peekerson wrote texts to opposing team members, insulting the captain of his own team. He was also dropped because he lacked passion. Unfortunately for Peekerson, The new director, Andrew Squirtles, is also the captain that he was texting about earlier. While Squirtles is saying that the text played no part in his decision, fans of the team are not convinced. Noted commentator, proud Viridian City man and loud Meowth, Jeffrey Oshawott, also voiced his disapproval. He said that a strong Viridian City resulted in a strong international side but even he felt that Peekerson would be a good addition to the squad. Jonathan Agmew, too, added that the whole situation could have been done in a better way. And unfortunately, opener Jonathan Diglett has had to retire after getting too many Psyducks in his latest matches. Thanks, and back to your usual programming. Letters. Thanks to Sega Badawi for that piece of uh, cricket focused local news. Uh, we have some letters to read out. Simon. Have you seen that one that's literally just come in? I have not. Uh, Do you want to read from, it out? Well, I'm not sure. I'm checking to you whether we. Uh, okay, well, let me. I tell you what, you deal with that. I'll, I'll, I'll find. I'll see whether we're allowed to read it out. Okay, okay. so the one I was going to read out was from Lawrence Weir. Hello, Lawrence. He says, Dear team and super special guest. I really like this question, by the way. If Kickstarter was inverted and you could pay towards stopping a game being made, <laughs> which game would you want to stop ever having existed most? And how much would you pledge for that to happen? I don't want a prize because I don't have a Steam account. Love the show. Lawrence. Uh, yeah, Al, uh, you have to nominate one of the letters, by the way, to win um, a Steam code for oh, no. the indie mixtape. But you um, can't okay. nominate that one. No. So. Okay. Which game would you pay to stop ever having existing? Mmm. That is difficult. Isn't that isn't a it? good question? Oh, Smash Brothers. Oh, ah. Oh. <laughs> I was trying to play that over the weekend with my son. What a load of nonsense! I don't understand it. And even even <laughs> him, who will do anything to play a video game, he was like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't like, I don't understand it." Although he, he likes it on 3DS, he doesn't like it on Wii U. Love it though, and is that and so I yeah, Smash we played it and didn't get it, did we? No, I, I think, I think. <laughs> Right. I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think it's the Emperor's New Clothes of video games. I think we're the only ones brave enough to say that right. game is, that game is I like rubbish. It. Do well, you? That's okay. Why? Oh. Why? Just because I like it. fighting games, and I think it's actually... You I sound like my pretty... six-year-old. I said, why do you like it? Because you can smash people. Yeah. <laughs> smash them. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's actually... Underneath, there's quite a lot going on there. They all there play a lot going on. They, they all play in my office. Yeah. Yeah. It's lovely lunchtime. It's, it's nonsense. They're, no? all, they're all going, oh, lovely clothes, yeah, Emperor. Exactly. Love it. It's very well made. <laughs> While I'm stood there naked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, it doesn't matter because it doesn't exist. What about you, Simon? Oh, game would never. Uh, I'm going to have to. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Think on. Yeah, I will think on. Anne, I've got any answers? Uh, I was just thinking, uh, maybe of games that have made me really scared. I don't really like being scared very much, and it was definitely the opening thing of uh, Devil May Cry when that just came on and it went Devil May Cry, <laughs> scared, uh, and shit. then I shut it down. Right. So I didn't even really play it. Okay. How, how much? How much would you pay to? A uh, load. Okay. How? I think I might go with Guitar Hero. What? Oh. Sorry. 
Why? It Simon gets on made my nerves. that game. Make that game. Why? Simon's you... responsible for that game. Well, to basically, yeah, I, mean, I, I, quite, I even quite enjoy it. But I was just thinking, it just sort of jumped out to me as something that I found a bit annoying. Okay, bit annoying. Wow, yeah. you've got a very low Because without Guitar Hero, there I would be was... no rock band. I even better. I think he's been a bit petty after what we said about <laughs> Yeah, it's vindictive. Oh, streak has come out. Sorry. All right, here we go. Dear Simon, Steve, Anne, and your super special guest, writes Robert Wells. I've just read the recent Kotaku ramble about crunches and the horrible world of overworked game devs and I am sad. It resonates with my current feelings that all over we are expected to work harder for less, especially given the recent report suggesting more crunches equals worse game. So, instead of dwelling on that and looking forward to Eurovision, any tips? I think the thing to take from recent years is gimmick plus good orchestrations equals win. Pip Pip Robert. P.S. This is a reminder that I won a thing and did not receive it. Oh, yeah, admin, yeah. Okay. Admin. So you, HR so, says admin, do it. Um, you also can't nominate him, Al. <laughs> so, right, okay. Because we haven't sent him what he won last time. <laughs> okay. And you can't add duplicate product codes to Steam, <laughs> can you? So... Um, right, you're the Eurovision expert, Steve. Who's well? I've been uh, so busy writing my Nordic talk, which well is uh, for delivery on Thursday, yeah. that I have genuinely been too busy to look at the entries, and I am really excited about doing that. But I'm, I'm worried I won't have time before the day. My uh, tip would be. I don't want to know what your tip no, is. No, no, no. My tip is for watching it. Okay. Do right. what we did last <laughs> year, which was create a um, uh, bing like a Eurovision bingo. Yeah. Do shots for every. Everybody drinks. Everybody drinks. Everybody drinks every time one of the bingo things comes up. You'll also, have a lovely time. Also, I'm going to a party this year where there are two rooms. There's one oh. room for people who want to watch Eurovision, one room for people who want to watch Eurovision ironically. <laughs> which which nice. I think it's good. Segregate the people who are unable to have a good time without saying, yeah, it's a bit stupid, I'm scared mm. people will think I'm stupid. Uh, get rid of them. Don't, don't have them harsh your vibe. What are you going to do to that room? Are you just going to lock just them set it in on there? Fire. Yeah, obviously. Obviously. Uh, dear team and super special guests, it's been a wonderful month with early Marioki, followed by a second helping this week, the anniversary celebrations. The first entry in the Taylor Swift universe, joke shamelessly stolen from Steve's Twitter in the Bad Blood video, and not one but two bank holidays. Uh, at the first couple of weeks, uh, the first a couple of weeks ago, and the next, uh, the other next week. Hang on, is that a backhanded compliment? Because it means that there are two weeks where OLL isn't on air. No, wait, that's not how I meant it. Oh, God. Anyway, uh, scarily, it does mean it's nearly E3 time already. And so in that vein, I asked the collective brains in the studio, scenario, you can put on your own press conference for either OLL or for whatever this week's SSG would like to promote with an unlimited budget and potential guest list. What does your show consist of and which special guests do you invite on stage to talk about your thing? Regards, Ben. Our very own press conference. Yeah, either for us or for, what well, I mean, anything you want. I'm assuming your game. Yeah, what can I promote? Hmm. <laughs> has, anyone said, has anyone said that they're not doing a press conference at E3 this year? Has anyone made a thing of that? Well, Nintendo are still just doing their online one. Right, okay. I can uh, break exclusively that Laughing Jackal are not doing a press conference. Okay, thank you. Exclusive. I just I wonder whether we could do uh, we could just call our press conference the Microsoft conference. <laughs> <laughs> they have actually though they they've called theirs. I don't think Sony have called theirs yet. Yeah, okay, we could call it the Sony conference yeah. of E3 2015. Uh, we could announce that Sony are shutting down. Okay. Could we? Just just for laughs. And who would you have on stage to do that? Um, I, uh, um, who were the celebrities you said were doing the the uh, the film earlier? Let's tie it into that news story. It'll look like uh, we thought ahead. Uh, like use one of your nicknames. Sylvester, 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 Sylvester Sly Stallone. Yeah, but that's a real John. Um, Actually, I've changed my mind. Let's yeah, not do this Goodman. again. No, let's. It, it's a bad idea. <laughs> Arnold. All right. Um, Simon, I, I looked at the letters. That. Do you mean the one that we we do you mean the one that we had from sorry my Gmail's closed. Do you mean the one we had from Aiden Minter? No, I don't. Oh. Uh, Al's got a letter, doesn't he? First before I have, yeah. It. Hold your horses. Uh, this is from Tim Miller. I've been playing 80 days recently and really enjoying it. I do wish, however, that when I got back to London each time, I could download the story I created. Which other games have amazing stories that you'd like to read again in the future? That's a pretty good idea, I think. Yes, I've played Splatoon. It's amazing. Everybody buy it. I think maybe we can get in touch with the Inkle guys and we can 
sell that idea to yeah. them as, oh, and point. maybe Don't give out there. we could that we could get a cut and then we could give a cut of what we get to Tim yep. everybody wins how right? do you rewind radio though because everyone might have heard we'll just, this we'll just edit it out in the podcast stop, somebody fun. stop pressing ben, play and record Ben who edits the podcast if you get to this bit you shouldn't be getting to this bit <laughs> yeah. so make sure it's not there it's, it's a terrible idea um, right uh, Al who are you going to pick to win um, the indie mixtape I, I'm not allowed to pick anybody else, am I? So I think Tim Miller wins. Tim Miller, well Tim done, Tim. Miller. Well we, done, Tim. We yeah. probably won't send you a code. <laughs> probably won't, but you have do one. Do get in touch. Uh, yeah, thanks Thanks for emailing everybody. Uh, please do... Sit. Well, we're not on next week. No. no. Bank holiday, time off. We're back on June the 1st. Uh, guess who we've got on? Who? Jack Attridge. Is no! Coming on. Jattridge. No! Jattridge. Yes. Whoa! J- Jack Attridge is coming on. And he's promised to reveal all. Pants he, on he has and it. pants he has on. <laughs> but that, don't let that stop you from... I don't have from, to do that, do I? <laughs> don't let that stop you from sending us letters. No, but uh, if you email ask us. It, but also, if you've got anything you want to ask Jack... If you've got any Jack, questions for Jatridge, uh, just let us know. Uh, email. Team at Oh, no, home. sorry, he might not be coming. Uh, he's, he's June the 8th. All so, right. <laughs> so, hot, but think of them. Fire. Think of them now. Think if now. you've got any questions, you would like our next guest yeah, exactly. to re- record for Jack Attridge. Uh, Keep on one dot com. Listening to One Life Left, we're a video game radio show. You sound a bit grumpy about that. No, I was oh. just actually. <laughs> you know what that sigh was? What? That sigh was me reflecting on Martin Hollis. <laughs> it genu- genu- genuinely was. Uh, uh, it comes to us all at least once a day. I think <laughs> it does. It does. No, I was um, during the break. I was showing Anne and Simon a screenshot of a game I'm working on, uh, which Martin Hollis described as the world's first Radio 4 video game. <laughs> you just descri- What did you just describe it as, Steve? I just described it as um, <laughs> as the video game equivalent of your boyfriend, wordy and over-emotional. <laughs> Which is good too. Does he yeah. listen? I'm sure he does. He's literally he? listening right now. Is he? Yeah. Hello, darling. Uh, hi, Anne. How are you doing? <laughs> Can I, say happy, back on. can I say happy birthday to my wife then if we're uh, abusing oh, It Lord, was my boyfriend's sake. birthday yesterday and it's your wife's birthday today. Oh. Al, got any dedications? <laughs> I'll say hello to uh, my son Noah. Yes, hello yeah. Noah. Yeah. Hey, Hi, Noah. good lad. Steve? Should we do a shout out section? <laughs> come on, let's do a shout out. <laughs> um, shout out to Martin. Big Martin Hollis. Come on, Big Martin Hollis. Here's a shout out to the press release that we've just received. This is how not to do it, Al, okay? Okay, I'm taking notes. We've just received uh, an email, unsolicited, I might add, that says... <laughs> and, we do, and we do actively solicit. We do, we've do. <laughs> seen some soliciting I've earlier. Not had, I've not had any soliciting. Exactly. Hi, Anne. Uh, yeah. begins this uh, email to all of us. It says, I promised, <laughs> I promised last week I would share a press release for the launch of, and I'm not going to read the game name out, um, for the launch of this game name for iPhone and iPass. <laughs> Presumably a new for it. So here it is, under embargo until Thursday 21st of May 2015. We've not asked for this. Are we beholden to this to this embargo? Do you, want, embargo? Do you want me to say whether or not you are? <laughs> yeah. Right, so the next paragraph <clears throat> is correspondence from a PR agency. 
please prepare an article, a tweet, a news. <laughs> a, a news! A, a news, a post, or just a shout for the game launch on Thursday 21st. You can talk about, and it goes to list some subjects that we can talk about <laughs> oh. after the ah. embargo. See, um, I was okay until then. I mean, you know. Do they want a shout out? Is that why it was emailed just now? They heard that we were doing a shout out section. Thanks, thanks for letting us know what we can prepare. <laughs> That's unbelievable, isn't it? I'd go for the uh, a news. Have we go for a news? <laughs> yeah. We're not going to cover that. Are we ever going to review this game? Gonna give uh, it seven. Have you got an eye pass? <laughs> got an eye pass. If you That's send me an eye pass, to... then maybe I'll review oh, it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, we've got Marioki to do this week, don't we? We do, yes. Yeah. It is the third Thursday. Third Thursday. So every third every third Thursday without fail, we do Marioki whether you see it or not. And this time, most of you are not going to see it because we're doing it in a foreign, aren't we? We are. In a foreign land. Uh, we're going to Malmö uh, yep. in Sweden. That is how, that's how we figured out that you pronounce it. Well, Malmö. Mal- Malmö. You, we've, been there like five years in a row. You what? would think we would get there, yeah. but we're going to uh, Malmo or Malmo. 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 Uh, Malmo. We're going to Malmo and we're going to do uh, Mario Kit, the wonderful Nordic game. We're very, very excited about that. We did we're, do Mario Kit last week as well, of course. We did. We uh, premiered a uh, song about our guest last week, Al. If you're lucky, we might sing a song about you. Oh, I do. I love time. singing. <laughs> so come along. <laughs> you have to there. be there. No, we did um, sing. sing. Uh, call me out. Can you do a bit now? Call me out. Yeah. Well, we did uh, for Jimmy Dance, who runs the loading bar. Where he's, we we've had Marioki for the last uh, so, so year. You know, there's uh, there's a name. You, you Jimmy brainstorm. Dance. Yeah, Jimmy Dance. What what, what are we going to do? What are we going to do about what what song <laughs> are we going to do a, mm. around? I, it's un, it's understandable. You're not a professional. We are. Simon, yeah. just, Simon just knocked one out on the bus. I rocked out on the bus. <laughs> I was concentrating so hard I missed getting off and woke up. Sorry, woke up. Looked up, <laughs> when the, looked up when the bus had terminated. It was oh, raining right. really hard. It was raining so hard. Steve had to send essentially a this runner out true. to buy some shoes. This is true. To buy some shoes from Sainsbury. <laughs> for, we didn't bring this up at the time. No, from, pe- was it from, from pe- Peacock. 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 Peacock shoes. Ten pounds on some fake, shoes. <laughs> fake converse exactly. and five pounds on some socks. <laughs> so we should thank Lucy for doing that. Yeah. We should also say very, very grateful. Yeah. What were you singing? We sang uh, a David Bowie song in, in his honor. Oh, nice. yeah. James Dance. Dance. Yeah, so it's good. Yeah. It writes like itself it. at that point. Oh, you it? have to. I see. I'm with you yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just caught up with the format. Well, that format has now extended to, to a whole year of yeah. loading, which is why we're celebrating yeah. that. And, uh, and 200 songs. Is it? 200 songs we've got now. Excellent. I'm going to do a new one for this week. I will try to do a new one as well. Amy Winehouse. Really? First Amy, yeah. What one? Back to Black. Okay. That's a good karaoke song as well. Do you know... I know that's a good karaoke song because it's really good on SingStar. Right. Because you can just you can just make a noise for quite a long time because that's what sort of what it sounds like. Okay. I mean, I've got the chorus. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Mark Cerny carefully chose his words. He lied a hundred <laughs> times. He said his game be good, and then he gave us knack. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I like that we're so sick. As soon as you started, I was like, I know where this is going. <laughs> yeah, so I just need to write the uh, the verse now. Anyway, that's super, super Great. exciting. Yeah. So we we'll hope to see some of you at uh, the Nordic game uh, Marioki, and we will let the rest of you know how that goes on our next One Life Left. Um, you know what? It's time for the return once more of Derek Williams. <laughs> Hello again, it's been a while hasn't it, though not as long as I was away last time. Anyway, I'm supposed to have retired from doing all this. There was that big farewell and all that, but now this is negating the whole point of that. But anyway, let's get on with things, shall we? Having heard it mentioned on last week's OLL, the thought of video game store day, like record store day, has been somewhat difficult to get out of my head. We do need something to bring greater prominence to independent game shops particularly those that are based in markets, and are in Doncaster, and owned by me. After all, the going is pretty tough right now, despite the supposed economic recovery as suggested by the politicians. By the way, did I ever mention that I ran for election once? I can't remember. I probably did. It was a long time ago and was really all Simon's doing. 
Vote citizens for undead rights and equality. Yeah. Right, so let's have a day where publishers give me loads of exclusive limited edition titles to sell. Just think of the market penetration they could have by being sold by the world famous free market economist that appears on One Life Left. I can think of no greater honour for them. And they are doing the idea of visiting indie game shops a great boost. Well, mine at least. That is, of course, all that really matters. Everyone else can close down for all I care. Half capitalism for the women. Or something. I'm Derek Williams, and please help my free market economy video game store day become a thing. Thanks, Derek. Welcome back to One Life Left, and this is our review section. And what have you been playing this week? Oh, um, I have been playing uh, Kitty Powers Matchmaker. Yes. Ooh. Yeah, it's really brilliant. Uh, so it is a dating sim. Uh, you are working at Kitty Powers. You are. You- <laughs> no, I am. That's part of the game, Simon. Yeah. yeah, that's why you said it. I'm working at Kitty Powers. Congratulations. Matchmaker. Uh, and you have to push play and record. <laughs> Emporium, let's call it, uh, at the dating agency, and you get clients coming in, and then you have, and then you have a little black book full of potential dates for them, and then you, um, so you pick out them based on their interests and who you think they might like, uh, and then you help them out on the date, uh, different like topics of conversations, um, yeah, and then just like various different things open up as you get further and further through. You can uh, find out different things about people, so you can match them up better. And it's really, really fun. Like it's so thorough. It's uh, I've played some games of a similar style to this, which haven't felt like they've gone into quite so much depth in the actual dating segment or whatever that segment. You're running, you're running like a kitchen, or you're running or whatever. And the the bit where you're actually playing. The uh, doing the activity that you're supposed to be running um, isn't quite as in depth, and this is really good. It's got lots of like very small little mini games within uh, the actual date, and it's just really like really fun. It's really witty. The dialogue is funny. Like it's just really good. Have you played it, Simon? I have not. I no. You see, you just sort of had a little. Oh, oh well, I've heard. Lo- I've heard lots recognition. of good things about it. Yeah, just like it's just. It's really brilliant. It's really like, uh, uh, yeah, the writing is really, really witty. It's really like fast. Um, I'm really bad at matchmaking people. I'm trying to improve my skills in that field. So maybe, uh, you know, give me a little bit longer on the game and maybe I could match. No, wait, you've got a wife. Steve? Yep. you got a girlfriend, haven't you? I do. Oh, can I? You've got. I have a wife. Right. Mm. So. Of long standing. Uh, well, so there's no one here I could test out my skills on. Um, but yeah, Hello, mate. you know your boyfriend's listening. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm not testing out on myself, obviously. Okay. <laughs> I've already done one good matchmaker there. Um, uh, Anna. <laughs> who, who was that with? Me, me and him. That's what I'm saying. Wait, how did you get together? Snogged him in a club, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> when you snogged him, did you expect to go out with him for that? For for a year no literally no I made my friend Jude kiss him first right okay <laughs> and you can do that in this game can you <laughs> no because you actually have to go out on a proper date you well, might- and how did you, did you come back and go yep like thumbs up <laughs> licking her lips <laughs> did she <laughs> are you matchmaking <clears throat> <laughs> they go for dinner they don't go to a club in this. They right, okay. For dinner. A little, a little more respectable. Yeah, a little bit more respect. A little bit. Um, yeah, so I think it's really brilliant fun. I'm actually like looking forward... To, uh, my battery on my phone is really low because I've been playing it so much today. Um, and I'm looking forward to playing it some more. Seven out of ten. What have you been playing, Simon? I've been playing Codename Steam. Codename Steam? Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's the new Intelligent Systems uh, 3DS game. Um, it's a, it's oh, I a, love Intelligent Systems. Well, exactly, they're back, yeah. back, back. Um, this is uh, essentially XCOM crossed with a bit of Gears of War. No! Don't let that put you off. Don't let that put you off. So it's a turn-based strategy game, but you move... Um, but instead of 
uh, so, so the perspective is instead of going oh I'm moving three squares forward you actually move them forward in a turn by turn base mm-hmm. uh, what I like about it though is uh, we all have XCOM don't we um, and it, XCOM always should have been portable but the iPad version was great it's a little bit fiddly also a little bit buggy um, but uh, this uh so you open up the, the map by seeing the perspective from the characters. So right. you put one up high and then you yeah spot it. Yeah, it's good. It's in 3D, obviously. Cell shade. How many Ds? Set three of them, set in oh. an alternate Victorian steampunk London. Uh. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, it's got some um, really nice touches to it. All any human wants, all any human has ever played video games wants is a new Advance Wars. That's all anyone wants and it would be trivial for them to port it maybe they wanted to do this Steve I, I don't care what they want this isn't maybe about they, them maybe they prefer the giant <laughs> bomb car about me <laughs> maybe they that's do. still going <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know um, yeah oh. they, were, they, they wanted to it's a bold move to, with a new IP and stuff uh, just let the intern make Advance Wars do something I'll do it just Oh. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the introductory stages I've enjoyed a lot more because the, the problem with starting a new Advance Wars game is that you have to go through all the tutorial and stuff like that and, and, and this does it really nice. It's got really nice bite-sized levels and missions and stuff like that. I d- don't let my review, my positive review, put you off, Steve. <laughs> uh, it's good, it's good. Uh, seven out of ten. I'll tell you what will put me off is I'd have to find my 3DS charger right. again. And <laughs> I keep buying them from Amazon, I genuinely do. Yeah. They, uh, yeah, they basically disposable uh, um, very seems. very quick review for me uh, I've been playing Ether 1 on the PlayStation 4 uh, played it it was one of the free PSM okay. plus games uh, Louis P says they're not free <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> and he's he's off around the world <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the debatably free PlayStation Plus games uh, this month. It is a pretty uh, ish 3D wannabe portal puzzle adventure game. I went down the corridor, it told me to do something. I doubled back on myself, I got lost, I forgot what it told me to do, I turned it off. <laughs> seven, <laughs> seven out of ten. I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm being flippant, but I genuinely couldn't work out what I was meant to do. I gave up after trying every door in the but place. But is that so what you do when end. you wake up in the morning? Well, usually but I can find my way out of the place. Go and, out my flat, go and brush so. my teeth. More, where am I? Um, because. <laughs> yes, it is. Al, what have you been playing? I've been playing a really good game called Talomir. Good what? Talomir. Okay. So it's like um, a platformer, sort of hack and slash, randomly generated thing. You start off with an axe and. Um, you have to go into these dungeons and every room it adds to the number of baddies and it gets slightly bigger and more complicated. Okay, what format is it on? It's on, um, I've been playing on my iPhone. Um, it's a bit hard to read some of the font but the guy who's uh, made it, I think he's called Chris McFarland, he's uh, working on that and there's a Steam version as well which is really good. It's only okay. about three quid. Right. Really, 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 really fun. Very bouncy combat. Things flying about all over the place. Really good. Cool. Seven out of ten. Excellent. Excellent. Fantastic. Good. Well, that was uh, that was pretty. Good. We rattled through those reviews. We, we did. did. Um, I mean, I, I've been. I, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to. Did you see what I tweeted? What I received this week in the I, post. I did not see that. No. Guess who? <laughs> Who's got an Nvidia Shield? <gasps> yeah, <laughs> I've been playing. I've been messing around with that. Oh, Talk about it. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> okay, only two years old. Two years later than it came. Two, two years after it came out. Fantastic. I could play Half Life Two, a game that came out twenty years ago. <laughs> I suppose, uh, does it play Mario 64? It does, it does, yeah, I'll check it, I'll run through that with you, and I'm going to take it to Nordic Game, I'm going to be the only person there playing on a shield controller. Let's make it our thing. I think, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, this is the time where if we had an intern, we'd go through any other any business, business yeah. with them. We still don't have an intern, if you want to be our intern for the next few shows, email. Team at OneLifeLeft.com. I did notice there is a new story we haven't picked up on. Mm. What? Apparently there's um, an epidemic in the games industry that must be cured... Everyone's wearing plaid. Oh, yeah. Apparently it's a problem. Uh, let's have a look in this studio. Al, can you, you're wearing a T-shirt that's Plaid got count. a... What is I'm that? wearing a Harry Potter T-shirt. Harry Potter T-shirt <laughs> right there. Yeah. Steve uh, has got a T-shirt, has a T-shirt that says Pump Up The Jam. In bright I assume pink. it's Pump Up The Jam. I can just see the JA. Uh, what, it could be, what else could it be? 
pump, pump, jazz, <laughs> jazz, and a, and a cardigan, and I'm wearing this um, <laughs> hoodie. Hoodie. Sorry, <laughs> I couldn't see the hood. I couldn't see the hood. <laughs> Wear a cardigan. Is that a cardigan? This is a cardigan. Okay, yeah. well, it looks very similar apart from the. You're, you've got hearts and whatever I'm that is. A dress. On. I'm wearing a dress. Okay, and then I've got a. You've got a shirt. It's a bit. It's of pants. Pants. But it's, it's, not, pants. it's not plaid. It's I can, not plaid. I can I've got jeans on, though. Everyone Absolute jeans. nonsense in The Guardian, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> we can com- exclusively reveal that none of us are wearing plaid. Uh, Al, thanks for coming on. No, pleasure. Uh, uh, everyone should go and buy Flame Over. Yes, where can I we say. where can we follow you? You can follow Laughing underscore Jackal uh, at, at Laughing underscore Jackal on Twitter. Um, mine is uh, at ev for nac. Catch you. Eh? Excellent. Good luck with it all, and we'll Thank see you very much. You see you in two weeks. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.